It was 1972 in Toronto, Ontario, when I heard Dr. Sorello speak for the first time in my life as he preached the gospel. I was with friends from our church and we were worshiping the Lord. Then I felt a hand touch my arm as we were worshiping. And I turned around, I said to the person next to me, can I help you? Do you need anything? And the person said, what do you mean? I said, well, you just touched my arm. And they said, no, no. Well, of course, I thought they were playing games. And then we went on worshiping. And here again, I felt the hand one more time. I opened my eyes for the second. And I said, well, yes, you did touch me. Is there anything you want? And they again looked at me like uh, something was wrong with me. And we went on worshiping. And now the third time, again, there was the hand on my arm. And this time when I opened my eyes, I could still fa feel the hand on my arm. And I knew then it was not some person touching me. It was the Lord. And I heard his voice. And he said to me, I need you. That happened in Dr. Sorello's meeting in the early 70s in Canada. My life was never the same after that. Dr. Sorello has touched my life and your life and millions like you and I around the world. We will miss him. He is my friend. We've been friends for many years. I met him through Dr. Alex Ness in Toronto years ago, who was a mighty man of God and a great Bible teacher. And I've been to his meetings and I've been touched deeply. But I think the most wonderful things I've experienced with him is when I sat often in his home, just talking about the things of God and I learned much from him, much wisdom from him. I'll never forget when our ministry was young and I went to see him and we talked about ministry and he gave me some great counsel. I'll never forget that. Counsel that I used for years in ministry and I still do to this day. Well, he's with the Lord now, he's in the presence of the Lord. And do remember, that the word of God declares that he sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Dr. Swallow, like many saints who are in the presence of God, is alive and well. In fact, very alive and well. I'll never forget listening to Cody Ten Boom years ago when I went to Holland. I was again young in those days in the 70s. And I heard this mighty woman of God talk about surrendering to the Lord. And she used the example of a glove. She had a glove in her hand and she said, this is you and the hand, the Lord. And then she went on talking about how as you surrender every finger, then you can use that glove freely and play the piano. When my own daddy went to be with the Lord, I remember looking at the body in the casket and the Lord spoke and said, it's only a glove, Benny, it's only a glove. And then I was freed because, you know, you think this is dead. My parents married for many years. My mom was deeply in love with my dad and she was in there weeping with my brothers and sisters, sorrowing. And, and I said to all of them, finally, I said, this is not daddy. I looked at my mama and said, this is not your husband. This is the shell he lived in. And it was freedom. Suddenly, they all kind of came alive when I said that. And so when a saint goes to be with the Lord, the body simply falls asleep. But the individual is with the Lord. Remember, the only part that goes back to the earth is the earth suit. That's what I call the body, the earth suit or the shell, Paul the Apostle called it the tabernacle. There's a blessed scripture in Ephesians chapter one, beginning at verse 23 to 27, where Paul the Apostle talks about the fact that he is uh, between two decisions, whether to be with the Lord or stay with the church. 
And then he made this powerful statement in verse 27. He said, whether I'm gone or whether I'm with you, I will know of your affairs. Meaning that the saints in heaven know what's happening on earth. What a glorious day that will be when all of us will be joined together, meeting the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord we love and serve. And Dr. Sorello served the Lord Jesus with all of his heart. I'll never forget one day sitting with him in his home. And I said, Dr. Sorello, I just want to be a real Christian, one who carries his cross and follows the master. And he looked at me with such beautiful, uh, it was a, a, just a sweet moment, a very beautiful moment. And the sweetness came through him so wonderfully when he said, that's all I want to, Benny, that's all I want to. Well, that's what we all want, to please our precious Lord. And Dr. Swello has touched millions of lives around the world. Everywhere I've been, whether it's Africa or Brazil or Central South America or Europe or Asia, I've met people who've always told me how Dr. Sorello has touched their life. And today they're in ministry, all of them. So rejoice. The day is at hand. The coming of the Lord is near and we will be together again. And to Jesus be the praise for all that he did through the life of a man named Dr. Morris Sorello. I was so glad to know him, so thrilled to be his friend, and I'm looking forward for the day when I'll see him again with all of you in glory. Thank you.